you said in those days it wasn't you, you couldn't just turn on the TV and um, get coverage of all the I League matches. Um, there weren't there wasn't any highlights of the matches. They would televise one game, but the others may not be shown, and so you had no idea about your opponents. So, uh, what eventually brought you back to India and what was your first impression of Indian football at that time? I used to come back every winter, basically. So, I'd finish around the end of November. It used to get cold in New York area. So, you'd, and the, the contracts were such, they were nine-month um, rolling contracts. So, you'd have to be out for three months, roughly. And... It just worked out perfectly to come to India in those months because weather-wise, was you come come to India in December, January is the best time. And while I was here, I did a little bit of coaching, as I said, with um, Sai and PYS and some some schools. So I was always in touch with what's going on in terms of what the levels were in Indian football compared to what was, let's say, in America or in the UK. And in two thousand and nine, when I moved back. Um, just for other reasons, we had to move back from, uh, my wife and I had to move back from the US. And I actually had a job offer at the time with Man United, who were set, at that time they were setting up, going to set up an academy in India, um, a residential academy, and they were going to bring four coaches over from the UK. And I'd interviewed for that, got the role, but in the last minute, um, so we've already halfway there in the UK when I went to meet them before on my way from the US to India. Um, the job changed. They weren't going to open the academy. They decided to go on a different route in India. So that academy never materialized. So I came back here with no, no definite job or anything. So the idea was always to try and look to do something in, in youth development. And it's through that sort of youth development angle that I ended up going to Shillong in the first place in I think it was May 2000 or April 2010 so and then just so happened yeah, I was impressed with their facilities I was impressed with how the club was actually set up but unfortunately they got relegated yeah. that season so it's almost unfortunately unfortunately because they got relegated the coach had left they were in the lurch they didn't have a plan of how to or what to do in the second division and how to come back in and i got a call from the owner to sort of help out with pre-season um, initially it was just like can you come and help us for two months and um, i've said this many times two months turned out to be two years and, uh, nice nice okay so and like fortunately for you one of your first clubs in india ended up being a hub of football talent the northeast is an area which so much of our in football community talent comes from there so what was it like to work with the with that atmosphere and uh, the period of time which you were taking which you were coaching shillong was also a challenging time of indian football the state of i league at that at th in those years and how it is now is very different so if you can share a little bit of your experience of that that would be good that's what attracted me to go and join that club was the fact that the first ever game I witnessed there, there were about 28,000 people in the stadium. It was packed inside and outside. People were there hours before all the game. Um, the club had a proper under-16 team, then under-18 team. There was a, a local league that you could um, play your players in. So that's what initially attracted me. And when I went there, it was, um, you know, obviously it wasn't professional. Um, there were, it was... I mean, to give a comparison, I've worked to the Division One college level in America. And if you compare a Division One, even a Division One in those days, a women's college team, compared to where Shillong Lajong, which was a an I, former I League club at that time, um, you know, it was chalk and cheese, the levels of professionalism, um, the levels of fitness and everything. So you had to go in and put step by step build build those levels of professionalism into the club, um, into the players. And so that was it, was, it was a good challenge because it was literally like building from the footballing side, a club from, from the ground up. And 
uh, it was enjoyable because everyone loves football over there. So everyone's in it together. So every member of staff is, you know, th th there's buy-ins from everybody, from the management, from the from the players, and you could see everyone's going along in that journey and following following you along. Um, but as you said, in those days, it wasn't you. You couldn't just turn on the TV and um, get coverage of all the I League matches. Um, there weren't, there wasn't any highlights of the matches. They were televised one game, but the others may not be shown, and so you had no idea about your opponents um, in terms of second division teams. You had very, very little knowledge. You couldn't even. I think there was KolkataFootball.com was a website where you'd get scores of. CFL matches, but in terms of you know you'd know who the scorer was, or if anybody got sent off, that little bit would come up. But you wouldn't be able to get squad lists. It, um, internet connectivity alone was a bit limited back back then in in the northeast, so very difficult to track. Know much about your opponents, so pretty much going into games blind at times in in terms of what your opponents are going to be like or what they're going to do. And what about the mentality of the players during that time? How would like from your from transitioning from the US to here? How did you approach that? I think that one of the first things I mentioned to the club was we got to look at their fitness issues because if they're not fit enough to play, and this is obviously pre-season, then how are you going to build up on things? So we ran a couple of fitness tests with them, the old beep tests, and this and that, and a couple of other things, and it was a shock to me. It was a shock to um, the management as well that where the players should be in terms of their fitness because all of a sudden it was accountable it's not just a subjective thing saying all right they're not fit enough which is a standard thing an easy thing to say it was look this is where your fitness levels are this is where they need to be and you could then you're measuring it it's tangible and then the players were also you had a comparison within your squad of where am I compared to the other player why is he starting why why am I not starting or things like that and then just little bits of get on the first training session I went to players were all wearing different kit different socks different things so it was just um, you know a shock in a way that you couldn't just put bibs on one half and say that team versus this team because the others were also needed so little things like that which slowly had to be streamlined and get it get into it but you know credit to La Jong's, the staff and the management and everyone over there because everyone helped along with that that process at that time